Introduction to Financial Literacy 101 for Busy People. Hello, welcome to Women's Financial Empowerment Group. I'm your host, Ruth Agbaroso. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. If this is your first time here, please go ahead and subscribe, like this video, and share it with your friends. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming again. Please go ahead and like, share, do all those wonderful things. Oh, and hit the notification bell. That way you'll know whenever I upload a new video. On this channel, I discuss all things money, making money, saving money, investing money, and more. So you're going to want to come back over and over to hear what I have in store for you. I am a financial coach, and it's my job to help you get from point A to point B in your financial journey. So if you think that financial coaching or financial consulting may be right for you, go ahead and take a look at my information in the description box, and let's figure out whether or not we'd be a good fit to work together. In today's video, I'm going to give you an introduction to Financial Literacy 101. This is for busy people. I wanted to make sure that I covered several of the basic topics of financial literacy in a fast way so that you don't have to sit here for a long video because I know that you're quite busy. So let's get into today's video. The first concept that I wanted to talk about is goal setting. Before you begin to decide on all the other things that have to do with finances, you're going to want to set some goals for yourself. Basically, goals are things that you want to achieve, but not that you just say, hey, I want to be debt free or, oh, I want to buy a new car. But you actually have a plan in place in which you will use to achieve that goal. So being able to construct a good goal and have plans in place to achieve that goal is what I feel is a first step in laying that financial platform or foundation. Number two, budget. What is a budget? A budget is basically a plan for your money, how you're going to spend your money and how much of your money you're going to spend in each category in which you will spend it. There are different ways to construct a budget. There are different strategies for budgeting. But one thing is sure, you have to know how much you make and how much you spend in order to put together a budget. And if you don't stick to that budget, it won't work for you. So make sure that when you come up with a budget, it's a budget that actually works. It's a budget that makes sense for your life and that you can stick to. And if by chance it doesn't work for you, just know that you can always tweak it so that it does work for you. Number three, an emergency fund. An emergency fund is what I like to call an umbrella. It is money set aside for the what ifs in life. It's for emergencies. It's not for, well, I think I need a box of pizza tonight. Let me go get that money. No, 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 no. It's just for emergencies. So some of those what ifs is, okay, if your roof needs work immediately, like if there's a storm or something else happens that destroys your roof, obviously that's an immediate need that you need to take care of. If you lose your job and you're unemployed for a while, you'll have that money to be able to continue living your lifestyle until you're able to get another job that you really want. Another example is if, say, your car breaks down and you need to fix it, and it's a large amount of money that you have to come up with at once, having an emergency fund gives you that cushioning, gives you that safety net to where you can still Go on with your day-to-day -day life and not feel so stressed out because you have that money set aside and you don't have to take money from your food or other expenses to pay for those emergencies when they come up. Here's the next concept. Number four, investing. This is such a large topic, at least all of these are, so I'm going to touch it really quick. Basically, you're putting in money or another asset into something in order to receive some sort of gain. There are so many different types of investing. I like to talk a lot about investing in the stock market, but you can also invest in real estate, commodities, rare art, so many different things. So investing in the stock market isn't the only thing. However, I feel like investing in the stock market is a really quick and easy way to start investing. And with investing in the stock market, the earlier you start, the better it is for you long term. Of course, 
there are no guarantees and there is some risk involved. But over the past hundred years, it has averaged about 10%. And that's way more than any bank is going to give you, right? Right now, they're giving on average 0 0.00, I don't know. So when you think about investing, if you don't have a whole lot to invest, just know that investing in the stock market allows you to invest and you don't have to start with a lot of money. Okay, concept number five debt. Did you know that there is such thing as good debt? Perhaps you've always heard that debt is bad. Get out of debt, run away from debt, throw away debt, all that stuff. But there's actually good debt and it's important to know the difference between good debt and bad debt. I like to think of good debt as debt that allows you to make money and bad debt as debt that takes money away from you. So an example of good debt is if you buy a home and it appreciates in value, you can sell it and make money off that home or you can even rent out some parts of your home or the entire home and make money. So to me, that is good debt. Or money that you use to invest in something that will bring you money in the long run. So student loans can be considered good debt, depending. <laughs> Um, and there are other examples. Bad debt is, an example of bad debt is high credit card balances, right? High, with high interest rates. Those are bad debt, right? Those are things that keep money out of your pocket because you're going to be paying and paying and paying. It's so depressing, right? So there's definitely a difference between good debt and bad debt. And it's important for you to know that. And I would say the more good debt you have and the less bad debt you have, the better and more fulfilled and financially healthy you will be. Okay. Concept number six, retirement. Retirement is basically what happens after you stop doing a regular job. For a lot of us as entrepreneurs, people who own their own business, they're not as concerned, we're not as concerned with retirement. However, some people are. If you work a regular nine to five job, many times you do not want to continue working that job until you're like a hundred years old. So you want to come up with a plan for how you're going to spend your days after you're done working with that company that you're currently working with. And that looks different for different people. So it's not a one size fits all plan. I like to tell people to start off with thinking about what type of lifestyle they want to live when that time comes. There's a big difference between wanting to spend your days on a yacht and wanting to spend your days in a small cottage in the country. Definitely a big difference. So you want to make sure that whatever financial plan you have, that it makes sense in regards to how you see yourself living in the future because you want to make sure that not only do you have enough save, saved up but you want to make sure that other things are in place to allow you to achieve that life that you want to live because if you fail to plan you're definitely not going to get that life that you want to live unless you really don't have a lot of plans in mind a lot of dreams in mind you just want to just rock on a rocking chair and just chill I should also mention that when it comes to retirement planning, it's great that a lot of employers, they offer a 401k. And if you're in a situation where, you're, where your employer offers that, I definitely recommend you take advantage of that to the fullest. That is a great way to start your financial planning. However, there are several other options to choose from. So don't feel like if your company doesn't offer it, that you're left out because there are other options such as IRAs that you can invest in, in on your own. Okay. The next concept is life insurance. Life insurance is not ensuring that you live forever. What life insurance is, is income replacement. So in the event that you leave this world, you will be able to take care of the things that your money was taken care of when you were around. So for instance, when you pass away, that money can take care of your mortgage and other expenses that you will leave behind for your loved ones. Also, if you have young children, you can be able to leave money so that they can go to the school of their choice or your choice. Um, and you can give to charities that you like to give to. So there's so many different 
things that life insurance helps you achieve after you pass away. And it's up to you to set that up while you're alive and figure out how much you want in your life insurance policy and who you want to leave it to. So that is like a quick overview of life insurance, but it's important to understand what life insurance is and incorporate that in your financial plan. That was the last concept that I want to cover. But just know that if you want to increase your financial literacy, you can definitely do that. It's not too hard to understand these financial concepts, but you may need some help. So definitely watch videos like mine. I have several videos on my, ch on my channel that you can watch and get some more information about each of these topics. You can also read books and I have some listed in the description box with my links so that you can ch check out some of the books that I highly recommend and see whether or not those make sense for you. I like to choose books that are easy to understand, easy to follow, and that you can go ahead and apply the principles to your own life as best as you can. Yes, I know that the information shared in the videos and in the books is general in nature, and sometimes your life is a little bit different and it's hard to match it up, and that's where a financial coach comes in place because as a financial coach, I sit down with my clients and talk to them about their specific situation. We figure out where they are right now, where they want to be, and a plan to get them to where they want to be. So you may need some extra help, but just know that even if it's just reading books, watching videos, and submerging yourself in the culture of understanding financial concepts, you'll begin to improve your financial literacy and you'll make better decisions with your money. Thank you so much for sticking with me throughout the end to the end of this video. I really appreciate that. Please go ahead and see my information in the description box, like I said before, and reach out if you need help. I also have some links there to some helpful tools that, that will help you along your financial journey. Thank you so much for watching this video. Go ahead and like and share if you haven't. And remember, change your mind, change your pocketbook. Bye now.